lecture, UAE's biggest class. Good evening, dear students and uh, parents for watching this program. You know, after a short period of time, we are again back with a live classroom in physics. You must have uh, noticed the changes that had happened from the very logo of the of NTV. So we have from the uh, from this month, a lot of changes you might be noticing in NTV as well. Just now, the last uh, hour we had a session. You might have uh, watched the program Kidu Kids. After that, we are going to have again another program which are which is purely meant for students. This is a today's class is a live program. Those who have watched the previous program, you may have uh, listened to a, a very thoughtful or thought provoking thought which says, no one can make you inferior without your consent. It is something which is really uh, to think on and that should be the start of our program as well. Let us start that uh, thinking in that direction as well. You are going to decide, my dear students, who you are going to be. Are you going to be inferior or superior that you are going to decide? So work hard to score better in the examinations, which will definitely keep you up. So you don't need to bow your head in front of anyone when you are presenting your academic performance to someone in future. That you have to think now. This is the time to wake up. This is the time to think in that direction so that you would definitely be able to hold your head high. So you are going to decide are you, be, are you going to be in the inferior part or superior part. Before we begin today's session, I have something more to add to it. That is a very, uh, what do you say, golden words of our own. India's pride, Dr. A.P.J. Abdul Kalam, who is none other than the missile man of India with a patriotic and soft heart. He said, if you salute your duty, you don't need to salute anyone. But if you pollute your duty, you are supposed to or you will be or you will need to salute everyone. If you salute your duty, you don't need to salute anyone. But if you pollute your duty, you are going to or you are forced to salute everyone. So my dear students, this should be the lesson for you. If you really work hard during this period of days, as the exams are very close, otherwise there are only a few months of time we have for the examination, board examinations. So if you do sincerely to your work, you can be bold enough, you can uh, be always uh, stand in front of anyone with, a, uh, with bold steps or uh, with bold mind, right? But if you're not doing your works properly, you will definitely be going down and down. You need to or you will not be able to present yourself on a later stage. If you haven't started your preparations very seriously yet. There is time. So this is what I want to tell you at the beginning. We have a, f a few months left for your studies. Some holidays are coming up. Plan, the first thing, plan very, very effectively. Refrain from all other, uh, other activities which affect usually your academic performance. The months coming ahead should definitely be uh, the time for uh, planning systematically and proceeding with a great vigor and keep away from all sorts of things which are going to distract you for uh, in your studies. So analyze and find out what are the areas which are distracting you. So those who haven't done your preparations most uh, what is appropriately or effectively, I will give you a few steps for you to uh, come into the stream. The very first step is you 
uh, collect all the resources like in CRT's textbook for CBSC students, a good guide plus you have to visit CBSC's website. There are lots and lots of materials which are useful for you to prepare for the examinations which are definitely uh, published by CBSC so that you know uh, it is uh, obviously the appropriate material and the answers, uh, the marking schemes or the keys given all are very much reliable to you because uh, the CBSC only publishes uh, this. There is no any uh, what is the second question, is it correct or not? So that way and uh, now if you visit the site you can make out that there are lots of board papers given like around uh, uh, 12 uh, question papers of different regions of even 2015's examination papers and uh, uh, the attraction to that is with the marking scheme all the answers are given and with precise answers what exactly they expect. So surely that is a good material. So your first step is to download all such question papers and uh, keep them in your um, computer uh, in different different folders according to the subjects you are ch you chose for the 12th standard examination. Then you take up the paper one up after paper you make a plan for that. First a few papers you will find time you, you, will, you will need to take more time to complete if you are not uh, familiar with any of the concepts. So what you have to do is you may uh, ask me why uh, how can I go straight straight away to the board papers even without preparing much from the board, board uh, from the portions you may ask. But you know what you have to do is take one question and see which chapter it is, which content it is, you learn that content, then answer it, then go to the second question, see which content, which chapter and learn the related content and answer this question. Like that if you proceed, I told you at the beginning it is uh, or it requires time, you know it will be, it will take some time to complete a few, maybe uh, one paper, first paper to complete will take a lot of time. But later on you will find that method easier and easier and occasionally or we can say there should be a system to revise that again as well. So, you will be more and more familiar with the questions and answers which CBSC is asking and uh, uh, you will definitely be uh, familiar with more and more contents as well. So, be with the question papers and the marking scheme for the time being, I am talking about for those who have not started the preparations uh, very seriously yet. There are some boys or girls you know, right. So, with that note we will uh, think and think into today's session. See today we have a new session, a live session. If you have any doubts or queries you can definitely uh, call us on the, in the number given on the screen. Today I was planning to do some contents of grade 12 and uh, you might, might have uh, studied transformers in the second uh, uh, chapter means electromagnetic induction then alternating current circuits come. In that chapter it is given as a portion uh, transformer. So, today the first part we will be discussing questions based on that or uh, contents first I will explain a few concepts okay, uh, related to transformers and then we will see some questions based on that which were asked in the board examination. Okay. See the concept of transformers, you might have uh, seen many transformers here and there. You know, the, the, I am not talking about the transformers, the movie transformer okay, that is there, you might have watched that. I am not talking about that. This transformer is uh, the one which actually, actually every uh, one must be having transformer with you now. If I say what transformer is, you may ask. See, the everybody is using mobile phones these days. With the mobile phone, you have a charger. We call uh, maybe adapter or charger. Okay, the charger. What does a charger do? You may say charger is charging the mobile phone, but charging refers to what? That is what I'm. What my question is. Charging means two processes are exactly happening inside the charger. The f very first thing it is converting like what uh, source available in the household uses uh, is alternating current AC. But the mobile phone is made in such a way that it has to work with a battery, battery is DC. 
So, a conversion of AC into DC is what is expected there. So, in an adapter or in a charger, uh, there is a conversion happening from AC into DC. And second thing, second important aspect to understand is, you know the voltage available for the household users, that is around 230, 220, 230 volt, that is what is accepted worldwide. So, even in the UAE also we have this particular voltage. But in a mobile phone, you may be using 6 volt or 9 volt batteries. You may see the what is according to the specification you can make out. So, what does the charger do further? It converts the 230, it reduces the high voltage. 230 volt, if it is straight away given to the battery, it will be damaged. So, we want to reduce the voltage from 230 volt to uh, maybe 6 volt or 9 volt. So, two processes are happening in that in transformer or sorry in, in adapters. First thing conversion of AC into DC, second thing reducing the voltage of AC from 232 what is the expected or required voltage. So, may have seen in electronic uh, you know keyboard and all you know use uh, charger that is again there may be some knobs to change different different voltages there are various uh, uh, you know knobs may be there. So, in a why uh, so what do we use for converting uh, sorry, reducing the voltage of AC that is from 230 volt to 9 volt or 6 volt to reduce the device which we use is nothing but a transformer. This is transformer. So, you may have uh, seen transformers in many places. One uh, transformer which we are on day to day use what we are using is what I said that is mobile phone charger consists or contains a transformer that is one first thing. The second thing is second place we can say like uh, in substations. You know, near your buildings, you might have uh, seen some uh, with a, a big uh, compound wall and all, a tall compound wall and all. There is a, uh, it will be given without any, uh, you are not supposed to enter the uh, uh, place there. You know, that is a big transformer which is converting a high voltage to low voltage. So, that high voltage you might have seen like maybe it would be written 1000, um, 1, 1100 or 11 kilo volt or something, very big voltage and it will be reduced to or it should be reduced to 230 volt. So, there we use a big transformer, there again we are using a transformer that is the uh, what is a big version of the transformer. There what do we do? Very high volt that is 100 and uh, uh, 100,000 or we say 100,000 uh, maybe 11,000 volt or 11 kilo volt uh, it may be converted into or it should be converted to the, the usual voltage or normal voltage which is expected for the uh, houses. There those, those places are called substations, there again we use a transformer, there is a transformer there, correct. Then where else you are seeing transformers, so you may uh, observe that substation will be written usually substation, it is there in every or near the houses, near the de residential areas, near the factories we have substations. Those substations are reducing the high voltage to low voltage, but why high voltage at the where, where is the high voltage coming from? That high voltage is coming from the power stations. Now, what is happening in a power station? In a power station, we have con production of manu manufacturing of electricity, production of electricity is what is happening. While producing electricity, we use what device? We use a generator generator is used to produce electricity. Where do we produce electricity? In power stations. So, what the term I mentioned at the beginning is substation. Substation is in the towns or near the residential areas or near the factories where we consume electricity. Power station is maybe in a remote place far away. There we are producing electricity and for production of electricity we have different methods. In India we have or in Kerala especially we have hydroelectric power stations, hydroelectric power stations. Okay, which converts uh, waterfall will be uh, that uh, what is a mechanical energy is converted into electrical energy. That is what is the uh, case happening in hydroelectric power station which is more uh, uh, what is environment friendly. Then we have thermal power stations, even we have uh, nuclear power stations in India. Right? So, in power station we are producing electricity with the help of generators. I will show you a small uh, what is a presentation which will uh, uh, make you understand what does what, how do you how do we produce electricity in a hydroelectric power station have a look at the screen so it is you can see one thing 
see there is a magnet on the see might have uh, noticed that so I will show you after uh, some time I will show you the screen there you can make out that this is in hydraulic power station yeah in hydroelectric power station one second let me show it one second there yeah it has come now yes see this is the working of this will explain the working of a hydroelectric power plant okay so this one is a magnet this is a coil this in fact represents what you call as uh, the armature and this is representing a uh, turbine and this represents the production of electricity. So, I am just uh, going to pour some water you see water is poured out of it. This is how a hydroelectric power plant works it is poured onto it the potential energy stored at the beginning is getting converted into mechanical energy which is rotating the magnet which is what is first rotating the turbine, turbine rotates the magnet, the magnet is causing a change inside the coil that is causing electricity. See if I increase the flow, I am increasing the flow, you, what do you observe? When you increase the flow, the greater the rotation of the turbine, the greater is the uh, production of electricity. So, there it is based on a, a very important principle, see I can show you that see I am increasing the flow further and further. So, a very big uh, what you say electricity amount of electricity is produced by causing a bigger change of uh, magnetic field. So, this is how hydroelectric power stations what is the energy conversion happening just have a look at and see how the energy conversion. Energy is converted from potential energy to kinetic energy to mechanical energy to electrical energy right. This electrical energy is produced over here can you say why it is blinking like you know why it is not steady keeps changing you know because from that what you can make out is the type of electricity what is produced over here is nothing but alternating current AC right this is nothing but AC correct. Now, I will explain another aspect about it that is now uh, in hydroelectric power station electricity is generated this electricity is what is being transmitted from power station to distant places. Okay. So, in from power station it is coming to the distant places in the town, but for that to be possible or uh, while sending the electric power from distant power station to the towns we may need we may need to send it in a very very big voltage. So, you might have seen high power lines there okay. the transmitting lines transmission lines are there you know in through industrial areas if you observe through industrial areas. Uh, you can make, make out that there are big big uh, transmission lines at a height. Those transmission lines are in fact carrying electric power from power plants to the distant places where we have substations. So, now the uh, basic question comes why do we transmit electric power at such a high voltage. So, it is what, is, what you call as that 11 kV lines those 11 kV lines or those high voltage lines only are reaching the substations uh, which I mentioned at the beginning. So, that is from generator there is electricity produced this electricity is to be sent to a distant place with the help of transmission lines. These transmission lines are reaching the substation. So, now the basic question comes is why do we require this to be sent at a very high voltage. So, that is a very important question listen carefully. See for that for the electricity transmission from distant place to the substation when it goes you see that through transmission lines if it is going transmission line means it is electric uh, what is a conductor it has got resistance. Resistance means there will be loss of energy this loss of energy or power loss during transmission is calculated with the equation P is equal to I squared R you know P is equal to I squared R that is power loss in transmission lines depends on these two quantities the current and the resistance of the transmission lines. So, now the question arises is how should we reduce the transmission line uh, sorry the transmission loss how will you reduce the power loss can you make out from the equation 
obvious from the equation it is very clear the power loss can be reduced by reducing current or by reducing resistance or and by reducing resistance. Reducing resistance what you will what all measures you can take to reduce resistance? Resistance is reduced by uh, what you say what are the factors on which resistance depends? You know first of all the nature of material, nature of the wire. So, we will choose a material with very low resistance. So, which material normally we use for uh, what is a selecting for uh, uh, with a low resistance which material or which material will we, will we can prefer in transmitting electric power? We have copper, we have uh, aluminum right and silver, silver and it has, it has got very low, low resistance material, but it is expensive and heavy as well. You know these transmission lines are to be held at overhead, overhead power lines they are. So, if it is heavy what happens it will sag. So, what is expected we need to use wires with low resistance and of course, lightweight as well. So, of the three low resistance and lightweight together that comes and even less expensive as well that is aluminum. So, we may use aluminum for transmission of electric power from distant place to otherwise from power plants to the uh, substations. So, from power plants electricity is to reach the substation, but when it reaches the substations on the way there is chance of loss of energy. This loss of energy can be minimized by keeping these two factors very low. Of course, we can keep the resistance as low as possible, but it is impossible to keep resistance 0, no, because it is for every wire has some resistance. So, we can minimize the resistance is kept minimum as far as possible. Then think of current I. I plays an important role because you know the I squared comes into equation. So, if the current is halved, the power loss will become one fourth, you know, square of that. So, what do we do is just let us look at this equation P is equal to V i. What does this equation represent is this is the equation that will give you uh, what is the power developed by a source or power power from a source. So, this power for a given generator this is the generator which I showed you ok. This generator has got a given power, power of a generator is a constant correct. So, this power is constant and now imagine after coming out of the generator if we can increase the voltage to very high value what you can make out is the current can be considerably reduced. So, the higher the voltage the greater is the sorry the higher the voltage the lower is the current. This is what exactly we are doing after producing electricity from the power plant ok. This is the generator from the generator we will give it to a what you call as a transformer. What will this transformer do? This transformer will increase the voltage to very high value. Why should the voltage be increased to high value? Then the current will be very minimum, current will be reduced. If current is reduced, the power loss also will be minimum. So, we can minimize the power loss, this is power loss. We can minimize the power loss by keeping current as low as possible. That can be done by increasing the voltage to high value. This is done with the help of transformer. So, this transformer which we use in power plants that is called step up transformer. So, what is the mechanism of electricity gen it, it, uh, the electricity generation how the mechanism I explained right. There we have seen there is a change happening. So, then what we can make out is that product uh, produced electricity is to be sent to distant place through transmission lines, but through transmission lines when electricity is going there will be power loss. This power loss can be minimized by minimizing current. To minimize current we have to increase the voltage to high value that can be done with the help of transformer that is called step up transformer. So, this is what we what is coming to the trans uh, the power plant sorry the uh, substations. In the substations where it come what we do is it will do there is a transformer in substation also. In substation this what kind of transformer we are using over here is this is a step down transformer. This transformer is what we see in the town right in the substation that big compound wall I said no. So, that uh, building is with a sub with it is a substation there we have a transformer. This transformer only is what is a feeder what is feeding the electricity to all the houses and factories nearby that is a substation right. So, from substation where it where the electricity will be distributed to houses ok. So, this is why it is near the residential areas ok. So, once again this is step up transformer step down transformer. Now, the question is what is a transformer? 
transformer is a device for changing the voltage of AC, changing we can say that means it can be to increase or to decrease. Where do we use for increasing voltage? In power plants. Where do we use for decreasing voltage? In substation, right? From substation only we are getting electricity, okay, in the houses, correct. So, this is working of uh, hydroelectric power plant I told you that in the hydroelectric power plant in the figure, once again I will show you that, just watch it once again. So, you can see that when there is a flow of uh, water, potential energy is converted into flow of water, potential energy is converted into kinetic energy, Rota uh, turbine is rotated producing a uh, change in magnetic field. This is the exact point you should think of. Now, the question arises is why when, when there, there is a big uh, what is a big flow, if the flow is increased why the current also is increased. There we have to think of a process called electromagnetic induction, right? electromagnetic induction. In electromagnetic induction what is exactly electromagnetic induction? This magnet when rotates there is a change in magnetic flux. Okay, so, you must have studied this equation, you can uh, watch this board. So, the electromagnetic induction is the process happening. So, there you studied this equation EMF is minus d phi by dt, magnetic flux. So, what does that mean? Induced EMF, this is EMF is equal to rate of change of magnetic flux. That is why we have, we have seen the greater the change happening d phi by dt, greater the change happening, the greater is the EMF induced, EMF is nothing but pot potential difference or voltage is developed over there, right. The greater the rate of change of flux, the greater is the EMF, greater the change of flux happens per second, per second. That is why like once I had mentioned about the cycling of uh, uh, a dynamo of a cycle. See, you might have uh, uh, seen this, see just watch this as well. Yeah, you can might have seen. See, in the bicycle, this is the headlight, you know, you, you saw the headlight here. Headlight and uh, you can see there is a dynamo here, here this is the dynamo, in the front side you can see a dynamo. Have you seen that? So, I will show, uh, show you the picture, this, the, this is the closer view of the dynamo. In this dynamo, you can see there is a, that cap, when, it, when you are cycling, that cap is moving. So, what happens inside there is a magnet, that magnet is changing that changing magnetic field produces current. That current is what is uh, making the headlight work. Okay? So, this is what is inside the dynamo. So, inside the dynamo what do we see? There is a uh, you know, magnet, you have seen that no? magnet, when it is rotated it causes a change. This exactly is the principle what is uh, made use of uh, in uh, generator as well, electrical generators in power stations. In power stations exactly the same principle. This law is what is called Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. This is what we have studied. Okay, now, in that case, what, what is the concept of transformer? Transformer has got two sets of coils. Okay, in a transformer, and I say two sets of coils, uh, one set is, see, uh, you can, I will show you what the picture is about the transformer. See, have a look at that, the picture there on the screen. You see that these are the uh, transmission lines. Just watch the screen. Yes. Okay, there is on the screen, you can see some, uh, sorry, one second. I think it is clear now. Yeah. See, this is you might have seen these are the transmission lines I was mentioning about, and uh, this is from where the this is the power plant, uh, what is a the step up transformers from where the electricity is supplied to the transmission lines, right. This is what you have seen before. This is the principle, the what is made use of over here is. The phenomenon what is making use of or what is made use of in transformers is what is called mutual inductance or mutual induction rather. So, mutual induction is what is the exact process happening. Now, I will tell you what is the principle of transformer. So, I told you today's portion we have is transformers. 
So, transformer works on the base or on the basis of the principle called electromagnetic induction. Electromagnetic induction is in a way that is what is leading to a principle called mutual induction. Just observe what is mutual induction. Now, you can watch it on the screen. See, this is what is the concept of mutual induction. Look, I am bringing on coil very close to it, you see. Now, when I am keeping this coil here, you do not see any amount of electricity produced here. There is no electricity. But what I am doing is I am bringing it closer, you see. When it is brought closer, as long as I am moving this coil, there is a change happening. That is, when I am moving, this coil is moving co closer to this. When the, move, uh, when the coil is moving closer to this, there is a change what is produced even in the neighboring coil as well. You are causing a change here. That change is inducing something in the neighboring coil, mutual induction, right. So, at this stage, you might have uh, heard of the term, you know, passive smoking, you know, smoking. When you are smoking, that will uh, influence the people around you as well, right. That is what you are not supposed to smoke in lift or uh, the small places, right. So, smoking first, it, it itself is injurious, but at the same time, it can cause injurious, uh, in injury to others as well. It is problem to others as well, health hazard it is. That is same way, way here when I moved one coil, the movement is this one. See, I am moving the coil like this, okay, but at, along with the effect is on the neighboring coil. That is called mutual induction. See, whenever you study about transformer, the first thing to see is mutual induction. Mutual induction. So, what is mutual induction? How do you define mutual induction? It is a phenomenon of inducing EMF in one coil due to the change in magnetic flux uh, uh, caused in the neighboring coil. Change in magnetic flux is done by the neighboring coil and uh, because of that the induced EMF is in the other coil. That is called mutual induction. This particular phenomenon is what is made use of in transformers. So, once again what is the use of transformer? Transformer is a device used to change the voltage of AC. Where do we use transformers? Transformers are used in uh, power plants for increasing the voltage to high value and in, in uh, substations to decrease the voltage to the normal value which is required for household uses. Again, now the question why you should increase it to high voltage, then you have to reduce it to high, low voltage. Why can't you send it directly without any transformer? Reason, during the transmission process, there is a loss of power. That is what I explained in the first part. There is a loss of power. To minimize the loss of power, we will need to increase the voltage, sorry, uh, yeah, increase the voltage to very high value in the power plant. Thereby, we can reduce the current to low value. Thereby, we can reduce the power loss as per the equation P equals I square R, right. But uh, such a high voltage, it is coming to the town in the substation, but the such a high voltage, you cannot, that is all the appliances in the world that are manufactured based on the rating that it is to work under a specific voltage. So, that voltage is nothing but between 220 and 230, that voltage is what is to be supplied to the devices for which we have to reduce the high voltage to low value, which is being done by with the help of a step, step down transformer in substations. Exactly the same from, from 230 volt to uh, maybe may 9 volt or uh, 6 volt, what is that is what is happening in mobile phones as well. So, in mobile phone charger does the same thing that is also a step down transformer. And even now in the devices around you, nowadays all the almost all the appliances are having a built in transformers because every appliance may require certain specific voltage for the normal working for which the 230 volt to be reduced to the normal voltage or normal voltage in the sense for a particular device maybe it has got a specific voltage requirement which is what is being done by or by the help of a step down transformer. So, step up transformer, power plant, step down transformer, substation and in the devices, electronic appliances, mobile phones, all we are using step down transformers according to the requirement of the voltages. So, we have you know for a specific mobile phone, you have a specific uh, mobile phone charger because that phone requires a specific voltage to work normally, right. Now, the mutual induction is further. I will explain this, what is mutual induction, why, why, did, why did we mention about mutual induction, I told you about transformer. Transformer works on the principle of mutual induction. What is mutual induction? Mutual induction is the 
phenomenon of inducing EMF in one uh, in a wire or in a coil due to the change in flux in linked with the neighboring coil. This is what is exactly applied in transformers. You see a transformer just got a in the schematic this is what you call a schematic diagram of a transformer. You know when you draw transformer there are two types of diagrams schematic diagram and symbol symbol after this is not symbol of transformer okay symbol of transformer is this one you know like resistor we have a symbol then uh, capacitor we have a symbol like that this is the symbol of a transformer and this is what you call as schematic diagram of a transformer so we will be able to use this diagram to explain how does it work or how mutual induction is made use of in a transformer just uh, listen here this is so in fact in a transformer if I am talking about a step up transformer you can say that there are see these are some of the uh, some turns insulated copper coils here wound round over, over this this is this is made up of iron iron core ok we are using iron core and the other side there is another set of coils these coils may, may be with larger number of turns if we are using it as a step up transformer this is a step up transformer if it is step down transformer this side you should keep a smaller number of turns see this coil or this set of coils called primary coils and these are called secondary coils primary and secondary primary is the one to where we are putting the input so, input is supplied to the primary. What kind of input is supplied? Alternating current AC and output is obtained from the secondary, secondary of the transformer. So, what I am explaining is how does a transistor sorry how does a transformer work and uh, the diagram is uh, the schematic diagram of a step up transformer. Okay? Input is supplied to the primary. Primary and secondary are two sets of insulated copper coils right insulated copper coil, coils where it is wound round where they are wound round they are wound round over a soft and core why soft and specifically is you know soft and has got a very high uh, what you call as magnetic permeability high permeability means uh, it would be able to like strong magnetic field it can produce strong magnetic field okay because of that the changes would be more effective more efficient it would be okay the lines will not go away it will be contained within this because of the very high magnetic permeability of the soft iron right so what exactly it, uh, how does it exactly function just listen for a moment we are i showed you the mutual induction concept by changing right greater the change you just observe this once again you see the uh, diagram sorry the presentation here you can make out from this see now the current is what kind of current we are providing here there is a single flow that is it is DC that is why there is no so I am keeping this is just imagine this is the uh, what is a primary coil and this is corresponding to the secondary coil okay like what I drew here on the board instead here it is DC now I am going to change it to AC so see I am changing it to AC what do you observe here say I changed it to AC when it is brought closer you can see the bulb starts glowing that is there is I did not move it I am not changing it but by itself it is changing right it is AC if I am bringing it closer you see how more correct more voltage is there more current is produced right so but the other one if it was DC see what is happening if it is DC nothing happens no current is produced but there if you want to change you have to move it right why because we want to produce a change so I am moving it that is why there is a current produced but instead if I am changing it to AC by itself there is a current you see the bulb is glowing I am not doing anything the bulb is glowing why because the current is changing why the current is changing because it is alternating current. So, what does this mean this kind of change or this kind of mutual induction without any movement to happen the type of current we are going to use in transformer should be alternating current. So, only alternating current only AC can by itself change the magnetic flux thereby it can cause electromagnetic induction otherwise thereby by mutual induction an EMF or voltage is developed in the neighboring coil that is possible only if it is AC. Th that means what does that mean the transformer works only with AC 
That is if you are providing DC to uh, one of the means primary coils, it will not work. You know actually the working is this way, alternating current is what is uh, supplied so that you know it is passing through the coil. The, so, it is bound around our uh, soft end core due to which uh, it becomes a magnet, but as the input is AC alternating current because of this current what is happening? There is a change right when it is passing through the coil the core becomes the soft end core becomes a strong magnetic field, but it keeps changing why it keeps changing because it is AC. So, in such a changing magnetic field only the neighboring one comes secondary coil this neighboring one causes therefore, by mutual induction an EMF is developed and that EMF you know based on that equation see V s by V p this is called transformer equation is equal to N s by N p ok. That means, voltage ratio and number of turns ratio would be the same. So, if you want high voltage in the output that is if you want to step up why what do you need to do voltage is directly proportional to number of turns. So, the greater the number of turns more is the voltage. So, in a step up transformer that is why we are keeping number of turns in secondary bigger than that in primary. Number of turns in secondary coil is bigger than that in primary. So, uh, what why it is it should be so then only a greater voltage is induced that is what is expected in a step up transformer. So, in a step up transformer this secondary ha has to have a greater number of turns. So, so, in short how does a transformer work once again the input supplied is AC because the nature of current is uh, AC uh, we can say there is a continuous change in magnetic flux usually we said you know the magnet should be moved in or the uh, what is it is uh, uh, to moved in or out to change the uh, magnetic flux thereby inducing EMF that is what we normally observe. But in this case if it is AC by itself it is causing change. So, there is a change in flux. So, the core becomes a, a changing magnetic field or a core becomes a magnet of changing magnetic field by mutual induction voltage is induced in the secondary coil. This voltage is high if the number of turns is high this is what is expected in a step up transformer this is step up transformer. So, there is a high voltage that is the output. So, we are getting the output in that way and if you want it in a like in a mobile phone adapter and all what, what kind of uh, setup you are using is a step down transformer it will reduce the voltage. So, number of turns over here will be less where N s is less than N p where in step down transformers like what we use in um, charger mobile phone charger let us say ok. So, this all this is what is the basic idea about mutual induction. So, I explained these many things what is mutual induction where do we use mutual induction that is in transformers what is the use of transformer why we have to send the electricity at a very high voltage those who have not watched uh, this program or this class you can uh, uh, you know see it again right in the catch up you have to get it and uh, see what is the principle behind that ok principle behind transformer why do we it is an important question for the uh, 12 standard students why do we require very high voltage for the long distance transmission. Actually uh, an ex a, a numerical problem is there in the textbook you might have uh, seen that numerical problem it would be say this I will show you the uh, one of the pages of NCRT textbook that is page number 268. So, you can see it on the screen see this page to page 268 and uh, the question number 7.25. This question you might have uh, done I will keep it below the logo right ok. So, a small town with a demand of 800 kilowatts power at 220 volt is just go through the question carefully this is a question related to a transformer a small town with a demand of 800 kilowatts of electric power at 220 volt is situated 15 kilometers away uh, from an electric power plant generating power at 440 volt. The resistance of the two wire line carrying power is 0.5 ohm per kilometer. The town gets power from the line through 4220 volt step down transformer at the substation in the town. First question is estimate the line power loss in the form of heat. The second question is how much power must the plan supply assuming that there is negligible power loss due to leakage and characterize the step up transformer at the power plant. So, we will try this question first ok. So, once again the question is to find out the line power loss ok. So, what is described here is we have a power plant 
where we have a generator. This generator generates electricity at 440 volt. Okay. This is sent to a distant place, but with the help of a step up transformer. Suppose we have a step up transformer here. Okay, step up. This step, step up transformer is stepping up from uh, say that we will find out anyway from where to where. This is transmission line. It is you know where is the town? Town is 15 kilometers away. And this is the town okay, where we have a step down transformer. This step down transformer only is what is connecting to the houses. Okay, this gives uh, it is given the town demands 800 kilowatts power. That is 800 kilowatts of power is required in the town that should be supplied in the town. All right. So, in the output of the transformer of the step down of the substation, we have to get 800 kilowatts, then only it will be supplied. Okay. And now, if this is the place, if you are providing how much is C? Now, let us see, you know the equation V s by V p is equal to N s by N p. But before that, one more thing, you know in a transformer, whenever the case of transformer given, normally we take transformer as ideal transformer, ideal. Ideal transformer refers to the one with no power loss. Inside the transformer, there are some reasons for power loss, but you, but you neglect all the other different types. You know, it is given in the, even in the question, it is given there is negligible power loss due to leakage. That is one of the ways the magnetic flux lines may leak out, due to which there is chance of energy loss. But we neglect all those uh, different types of losses so that we can equate the power. What is the input power? What is the output power? Okay, very first thing is. How do you calculate? What's the first question is how do you calculate the line power loss? Line power loss means I told you before P is equal to I squared R. That is line power loss. So, we need I and R. Can you say how much is R? It is given in the question the, the town is at a distance of 15 kilometers. But when you say it is 15 kilometers, what will be the resistance? And it is given also 0.5 ohm per kilometer is the resistance, 0.5 ohm per kilometer. Okay. So, what will be the total resistance 15 kilometer, but 0.5 ohm per kilometer. But one more thing given in the question that is it is a two wire line transmission that is, there are two wires. So, we should say for calculating resistance, I will write the resistance value here R is equal to the resistance is 0 0.5 into 15 into there are two wires into 2. So, that means simply we can uh, just see you can make out that this will be how many ohms resistance there are two wires correct. So, 15. So, 15 ohms is the resistance correct this is the resistance of the wire. Now, we need what is the value of current for which what we do is we will calculate we will make use of the equation V s i s that means output power is equal to V p i p. VSIS means output power. How much is the output power of the transformer? It is given 800 kilowatts. So, may I write it as 800 into 10 raised to 3 because it is kilo is equal to VP. Okay. VP is how much it is given in the question 4000 volt. So, the step down transformer is characterized as 4220 that is the characterized uh, ca that is the uh, step down transformer that is reduces from 4000 to 220. So, this input is 4000. So, we should say VP is 4000 into IP. Okay. So, just calculate IP from this you will get it as 200 ampere. That means, current in this primary is 200 ampere. This current is what is transmitted through this wire. Okay. So, what we will get is I squared into R. I squared is what? 200 squared into R is 15. Okay. So, find this one, this value when you get, you will get it as 600,000 watts, 600,000 watts that means 600 kilowatts. So, what we found out how much is the power loss? Power loss is 600 kilowatts, correct. Now, the question is how much the, must the plant supply? Second question is that only from this plant, how much power must be supplied, right? See, six, 800 watts is the demand of the town. 600 watts would be lost in the transmission lines. So, how much the power plant must apply? Basically, if you want to give some money to someone and we are going in a taxi, we need to ha have taxi fare also with us too. Right. So, on the way it will lose 60, 600 kilowatts power and we have to supply 
800 kilowatts in the town. So, how much we should uh, uh, provide to this 800 plus 600? So, 1400 or 1400 kilowatts, 1400 kilowatts we should supply in the power plant or from the power plant. Okay, so the second part and the next question you should try yourself and again I am telling you if at all you have got any confusions or uh, doubts related to these portions definitely we can get back to us we will be able to help you out especially when the exams are you know as the exa exams are fast approaching you may require some uh, help. So, you have to study well and collect your doubts and when we have the session next time you call us and we will be able to uh, sort the questions out I will explain how the questions are being solved. So, you will be able to try it at home. Okay, with that note, with again saying the golden words of Dr. A.P.J. Abdul Kalam, that is, if you salute your duty, you do not need to salute anyone. If you pollute your duty, you need to salute everyone. With this note, let me wind up today's class, today's live session of the biggest classroom of the UAE. See you again next week with another topic. Till then, bye.